प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द बिजनेस टुडे शो आई एम योर होस्ट उदयन मुखर्जी my guest today on the show is nisaba godrej uh, who created quite a stir last year as she took over as managing director and ceo of godrej consumer products because everybody sat up and said okay now we finally have a godrej who will be at the helm of godrej consumer products the flagship of the group but a few weeks back she stepped back to take on the position of executive chairperson of godrej consumer and inducted sudhir sitapati from hindustan lever the veteran from hul to take over as md and ceo of godrej consumer so she will be in a leadership role as chairperson but she has a new ceo running uh, godrej consumer for her so uh, it's it will be intriguing to hear from her why this change of heart and how she sees her own career uh, at the helm of the flagship of godrej consumer nisaba godrej thank you very much for joining in and it's a pleasure to have you on the show today it's a pleasure to be here with i and thank you for having me i i want to begin by asking you since i prefaced this interview by saying that you took charge and you sort of relinquished executive charge earlier this year i it's a fact which is not very well known that apparently you resigned some more than a dozen times earlier in your career to your father adi godrej uh, you you Re- would repeatedly yeah. put in your resignations and and they would all be sent back to you can you just tell us the sequence of events why would you resign so often uh, what would be the trigger points and how your father may have dealt with them uh the and it wasn't 12 times because i'm sure if it was he would have accepted it by now but it was 3 mm-hmm. to 4 times and this is going back about 15 years ago i just come back from business school and i joined the group and i had actually joined our agri business and was working on a turn around there and uh, you know wanted to make leadership changes and do all sorts of other things and kept you know getting told that your values are wrong because you know we stick with our people or you're being very negative and i was like but the bottom line's negative not me um Thankfully at that time I think my father probably realized that I was no one else was going to employ me so he kept his patience with me and you know somewhere along the line I learned how to influence and not get too frustrated and um, you know learn how to get things done so that's why I'm still still here now But would you concede on hindsight that uh, you were impetuous you were hot headed maybe Uh, and you've evolved over these years you are a different person today a different manager uh, today i wish i'd say that i'm 100% different but i think i've had some some amount of growth and i'm not as hot headed uh, as i was and uh, you know odai and i ride horses and if i can give you an analogy on that um you know it's like you take the horse mm. to the jump and it refuses to go over the jump and you know i'd get off the horse and say stupid horse it's all your fault correct and i think the learning as you gain a little bit of wisdom is that if you want that horse to go over the jump you have to stay on the jump you have to have the tenacity um and i think you know my path has been um i learned early on how to stay on the horse but i think it's riding gracefully and riding the path between the jumps also that i've learned uh, over the years that that's the most interesting analogy that i've heard over the years um, people have told me many things but not that l- running a company is like is like riding a horse uh, and has your father been the horse trainer as uh, the jockey trainer has he been at, at your side all this while he has i think i think i owe it to my father to keeping his patience with me uh you know we did especially early on in my career we did have very very different points of views on things but uh he he was you know wise so he 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 did coach me he learned to listen to me and he also taught me how to influence others and not expect everything just because i was saying it it was going to uh happen but the one thing that you cannot do while you're riding a horse nisa is to have two jockeys i mean on the saddle it's you alone <laughs> but right now you've created a situation at godrej consumer where you are the chairperson and you've got a veteran from the corporate world to become the managing director 
in your experience yeah. does this formula work can two people uh, jointly uh, take a product to success or bring a company to a successful kind of a, a, a finale or do you think friction is inevitable along the way well Ryan, it takes a lot more than two people to run a company so i don't think it's only about sudeer and me but i think it's what we do in totality and you know i was the chairperson before and i've been at gcpl in you know leading strategy and uh, in sort of leading roles for over a decade over a decade now and just to give you a little back little background to this if you think about gcpl pre covid we were not doing well so if you look at 2018 2019 right. growth had slowed our acquisitions in africa had become um you know were not performing sort of well and then covid came and you know that's like uh when your company is not doing well um you know that it that is a bit of a crisis and the one thing and the previous ceo vivek who you know i'm still extremely close to and who's actually been you know we worked so closely he'd had some health issues so at that time um you know what we sort of decided what i decided along with the board uh, was that through covid i needed to lead the company um you know i'd already had the sort of reins in my hands for many years but this was just holding it a lot uh, a lot tighter and um which i did i think we sort of nav- navigated it uh, relatively relatively well and you know the thinking at that time was that i would do this for a couple of years see us through covid and then start looking um in parallel for for a ceo uh, so the happened earlier than i thought but you know when a good thing happens you don't sort of waste waste time and so you know that's why he's going to be uh uh you know sort of formally in the saddle so to speak and i don't think or that and there's any sort of uh you know there it, it doesn't it's not a conf i mean you know i'm the sort of executive chairperson he's the ceo i think we'll have our roles quite sort of uh, outlined quite well and um you know the reason to bring someone like him in he's both strategic and operational uh, we've had these sort of growth issues uh in the past you know we had a very strong growth area growth sort of run then things slowed down things have picked up now but he has a you know quite a strong task set out uh in front of him and i think my role now will be and and i wanted this fresh pair of eyes also right i've been with this company for 15 uh years now i wanted us to take the bar up on talent i wanted us to think of uh growth in new ways so i think he's really sort of going to come in and do that but how do you see uh, the dis- distinction between a promoter run company and a professionally managed company because you know the reactions from investors in godrej consumers vary i mean when you took over the reaction was okay uh, this is the end of the road for a management run company it will now be a promoter owned company and this year the reaction was the opposite okay she's stepping back and a manager professional manager is taking over do you want to say what happened but how do you the, see it that is how your investors you might perceive it how do you see it you, you want to say what happened to the stock price when i when i announced that i was become when we announced I was becoming ceo the stock price fell 10% <laughs> and when we were going to announce sudhir i'd actually joked with my cfo and head of investor relations samir i said you better not let it go up more than 10% because my ego might not be able to uh take it but you know i think we went up the highest we ever did we went up 20% in one day but honestly odayan i, That's I right. mean you know and did you and feel bad then, though on that day did your uh, ego really get hurt no no i think I've, did your ego really did get he, hurt that day did you feel bruised no. by the fact that there was such a no. big reaction no no i you know you're taking the right okay. uh, decisions for the company and look let me just put a disclaimer out there um you know i am probably a product of some level of nepotism i'm not blind to the fact that i might not be here but for you know where i was where i was born so i'll give you i'll give you that i also think nepotism can be a terrible thing it can destroy companies it can destroy countries correct we can see what happens 
uh, in politics when this sort of gets out of hand. That being said, uh, I think you really need to look at people, not just, you know, are they a promoter or a professional? I think that's a very sort of narrow-minded view. But, you know, does a person have ownership mindset and are they a professional? Correct? And when those two things come together, whether it's in a professional or someone who has, you know, shareholding or promoter, whatever it is, I think that's a, you know, that's a pretty powerful combination. And Udayan, I have to tell you, you know, at that time, uh, when I did become CEO, all our big investors, you know, I have letters, uh, they, I mean, some of them even put it in writing, said we are very happy that in this difficult time, you stepped up, you stepped in. And, you know, I went to them with a the presentation saying, you know, here's the bad news. Here's the good news, and here's what I'm going to do about it. So, um, you know, I, I I don't think we should have such narrow views on sort of uh, <laughs> promoter versus professional. I think you really need to look at the individual, especially at the highest leadership levels. Agreed. Completely agree with you. And I was not accusing you of nepotism as well uh, at all. I, no, no, I, it I'm was not... said in a lighthearted vein because. Yeah, I... yeah, no, no. I'm not I'm not being I'm saying let's be honest about it there's nothing to hide you know potentially I am here because of where I was born but you know at hopefully at the end of my career you know uh you know my crosses and ticks are based on not what my last name is or you know what I did as Nisa or not because I was mm -hmm. a good rich so um I was just putting that out there that I'm comfortable talking about it no, you, you put it very nicely. I mean, uh, you will be judged by what Nisa did and not what your last name was. And I, I wanted to ask you that anyway. What does having a Godrich surname mean to you? I mean, uh, does, it, uh, does it fill you with a sense of obligation, gratitude? Does it rankle sometimes? What, what's the package like? <laughs> uh, no, it does. I mean, you know, I think it's... I think it's less about being Godrej. I think um, when I think of myself as an Indian woman and just this sort of ovarian lottery that I've won, correct? Just, you know, that I have a master's degree education and that I've had all this opportunity uh, in life. So, you know, the way I think of it, who, to whom much is given, much is expected, that famous sort of quote. But you know, much is expected is not something that weighs down heavily on me. It's, it's uh, you know, uh, I've, I've been dealt a good card and, you know, I should do something good with it. I think uh, that's how I think about it. Uh, it's a good card. I'll give you that. No question about that. Uh, but uh, uh, let me go back to what you were just saying a while back. That you were very candid in admitting that Godrej Consumer had a bumpy ride in those years of 2017-18. In fact, I remember a lot of investors would complain that with such a strong brand name, you seem to have lost your way a little bit with those international acquisitions. Would you concede that there were mistakes made along the way and now you're in a position to set them right? So, uh, Udayan, I think, you know, as any company, you know, we all make mistakes all the time. And I think you, um, and if you can correct them fast enough, that's very good. So if I just break up the acquisitions quite simply for you, the two big the two big pieces one was indonesia and the other was all the acquisitions we did on the african continent so i'll just take one second to pat myself on the back so the indonesia acquisition we paid about say 275 uh, million and if you sort of by any valuation right now it's about you know one one and a half to two billion dollars that acquisition is worth so i think that acquisition is done really well for us and it you know one country categories that were similar to the ones we had in india and we were able to go in and sort of do a good job there um africa's definitely i will concede uh you know being a bit of a different story my brother actually asked me a few years ago he said would you say that you overall sort of made a mistake and i said no i overall wouldn't say i've made a mistake i think i still think you know, Africa will be a huge growth engine and value creation uh, for GCP, GCPL in the sort of medium to long term. But there have been sort of lots of learnings from the Africa 
sort of M and A strategy that you know um, that I would do differently or would have looked at differently. Now the inevitable question, uh, given that the stock went up twenty percent the day you appointed Sudhir as the managing director as the CEO, but is Sudhir comes from a very strong background of food and refreshment. Is that a yeah. direction which Godrej consumer will go along in? Because if traditionally you've been strong in household insecticides, soaps, oh, hair care. But will you now move down the foods ladder because that's where the incumbents or the new CEO has such a strong st- uh, track record in? No. no, so there's no, there's no. We've not hired him to sort of build a foods portfolio. I think we're very focused on this, you know, purpose of bringing the goodness of health and beauty to emerging markets. And I think we'll stay much more closely the knitting closer to the categories that we're in. Obviously, you'll have adjacencies and step outs and, you know, areas where you sort of double down in, but food is not, uh, food is not part of that plan. Would you uh, focus more on organic growth or would you be as aggressive on the inorganic front that you've been in the last decade? So uh, I think I, I think the focus of Iron is really going to be organic growth. If you read some of my shareholder letters, also going back to last year and this year, you know this really that we need to be in sort of double digit organic uh, organic growth, which I think is very much very much possible. And then in you know in consumer products, you will always be looking at acquisitions. I think my thinking is that if we do, you know we do buy and we will buy it will be more focused on india and you know indonesia and southeast asia i think africa i clearly want us you know to have very strong double digit ebitda margins uh, before we put any more capital capital there so but the first i think the first priority will definitely be organic growth you mentioned your brother in passing just a few minutes back what's your equation with him like because you know you seem to have struck away into in different paths i mean he's in re- real estate you're looking at the consumer flagship was it by design was it like a sort of a carving up of the family businesses by your father what's your equation with him like personally we talked the coin of the no jokes apart uh my equation with hmm. my brother is uh incredible so if i you know count my blessings in life he's right there on the sort of the top of that uh list he's a um you know extremely intelligent uh, wonderful sort of uh, you know leadership can be a lonely business and you know having someone to travel that journey with is uh wonderful in family businesses you know not it can be wonderful or it can be terrible but um you know my brother is just a rock and super supportive uh it's just amazing to work with him and i always say that you know i was very lucky because uh post the initial differences that i had with my father in terms of viewpoints and you know strategy and stuff uh when he gave me the freedom he just fully backed me and you know he was always there uh by my side I, you know i remember we i used to live with my parents in my 20s and my father and me would take these long walks from valkeshwar to the oberoi anyone who knows bombay these two hour walks and talk you know very passionately about the business and i was always just fully supported and i have the same thing in my brother now uh um, you know this shared passion for godrej and what we can do in the business and you know um uh, yeah he's just wonderful and what's it like with your sister tania but uh, no sibling rivalry at all i mean uh, as supportive uh, as <laughs> no, nurture as yeah. nurturing no we're a very we're a very very sort of close family and not just at work so you know even outside of outside of uh, outside of work uh, very close so very good um very good strong relationship with both my siblings do you still get a lot of advice from your father uh, uh did it ever in your career would you concede that you felt a little bad when you were called adi godrej's daughter because you are your own person i mean you've had a fantastic education but did it sometimes rankle in your in your 20s to be called adi godrej's daughter no i think i was always proud to be his proud to be his uh proud to be his daughter so i don't uh um 
yeah, I don't think too much of this. Uh, you know, it's it's probably one of my strengths and one of my weaknesses. Also, I, I don't seem to care too much about what other people, um, you know, think of me or say of me. No, I've always been um, proud to be a daughter. Tell us a bit about yourself as a person. I'm, you spoke about riding horses. What else do you do? I mean, what are your other passions or interests? Um, so I think you know horses has been a lifelong uh, lifelong passion, and I absolutely love riding. And now I get to take my kids uh, kids with me. I love the outdoors, as I am. So I think one of the things that which which my father gave me actually was this love. You know, lots of water sports. Um, I love trekking, uh, mountain climbing, things like that. A lot of it came from came from him and he actually when we were kids uh you know would we'd go out in his little speedboat and we lived in juhu and he'd like drop us and in the sea and say okay now swim back and you know uh he'd let me ride there back and i think uh, there's this beautiful ted talk on girls and adventure and how it builds courage so i think a lot of my personality uh came from doing all these outdoor things with my father so i think that's a big love and you know i'm very glad i get to share that with my children uh, children now i think another thing that i'm really passionate um you know about is you know i talked about too much is given much is expected so i think being able to um really materially impact india in some way and for me i think um you know doing work in education and um, sort of being able to help bring equity in education in india um you know is another thing that i'm really passionate about um i like reading and uh, i'm an introvert so um i don't love people so much but i do love you know people i'm close to so with a few family and friends i like spending time with them you're a woman leader uh and not very old yet uh, how is it been balancing family life and pressures at good risk consumer because what, what, now what i was having a conversation not... with miss indra nui just the other day and yeah. i mean all the she's written a book which i'm sure you will read but much of the conversation was about the pressures and compromises a woman needs to make at the workplace how has it been for you on that front oh uh, it's been uh... it's been okay it's been um, it's been sort of fine but i think it's also udayan you, you know i read cheryl sandberg's uh uh sort of book yeah. about lean in and stuff and i think i used to come from that yeah. um sort of school of thought and then i uh read unfinished business by ann marie slaughter and basically i mean you know she says it all works fine till something goes belly up in your life with family or you know uh, it, it, something happens with a child and you have to you know spend in ordinate amount of time that's fortunately not happened to me yet so um i think i've been able to manage it fine and maybe the secret or the i am that you know i share with people is that i seem to have that guilt gene missing so you know i don't feel guilty that i'm not doing enough with my kids and i don't feel guilty i'm not doing enough at work i'm just doing my best correct and sometimes my best will be fabulous and sometimes you know i'll be falling flat on my face but then there's always tomorrow so uh, i think that sort of helps having the guilt gene missing You've inherited in incredible things, Nisa, from your from your family. You know, you don't feel guilt. You don't care too much about what other people think. You've got a good rich surname. But I I think you're all set. Uh, you know, I I don't think you should be complaining at all. You've you've got a fantastic set of things going for you. So I wish you all the best and thank you very much for taking time out uh, for this discussion today.